Hey everybody, it's Jillian. So I just wanted to say good morning and it's beautiful Wednesday. Um, yesterday was kind of interesting, fun stuff. Uh, yeah, I got an email last night or not an email, a message last night. And then also too, you know, I uh, really appreciate the understanding around the whole thing with checks and balances, because it's so true. That's why we have the system that we have is as far as checks and balances, because, you know, I exhibit sometimes the whole absolute power and usually it has to refer to me anyways, because people deal with me. But a lot of the times I do check with Kevin and with my other people regarding some information. So I'm not always coming off like I know everything because I don't know everything, but I have theories and some of the theories are based in logic and they're there until the new information comes about. And then this is why um, I was talking about absolute power can corrupt absolutely because not everybody knows everything. So it's always good just to have other people to kind of give you a different perspective. But I want to read this to you because you guys know I've de been dealing with a lot of like haters and stuff, right? And so I get a lot of friend requests. I don't know who they are, what their intentions are. So I kind of leave them alone until I see, you know, new information to say, okay, they're someone relatively safe. But here, I want you to, I want you to, to listen to this. So this is what somebody sent me. I'm not going to say who, I'm not going to even read like the people who, who said this, but I want you to understand that, that, um, that the tides are turning. So here is her page, have an open mind. Um, she goes against everything we have been told out our whole lives and they put my Facebook profile and everything and someone said thanks and so I'm someone's screenshotting what's going on in other groups what they're saying in other groups okay all right and so um, now and then said you need to be committed and everything now that I know this page cannot be seen by my friends I'll go ahead and share this the parasite was actually a very long worm with eyes and all. My butt was sore from all the waterfalls. Oh, okay, so she was doing waterfalls on my on my protocol. So she was pulling out excess worms, okay? Um, so my butt was sore from all the waterfalls, but I could just feel something wet around my anus. I went to wipe and nothing was on the paper, but I still felt something. So with that toilet paper, I used my fingers to feel just inside the anus. I felt what I thought was a small clump of stool. I pulled it out and it was a six inch worm. No joke, a six inch worm. The inventor of the waterfall, which is me, is named as Jill. I think you can friend request her. Now I don't always accept friend requests because I have no idea people's intentions. I don't want to have a bunch of trolls just talking smack on my page. So I have to kind of know that you're relatively safe. How I know that is you're watching my videos and you're liking them and that I see a continued support. And you could very well be a troll and like my stuff and just want to be able to be a friend. And then, but I don't care. It's even the perception is, is what I'm fine with. So the inventor's name is Jill. I think you can friend request her or just watch some of her public posts and videos. She used to have a Jilly Juice Facebook page and it had well over 60,000 members in a short time. But there was a lot of trolls, so she deleted it. Excellent testimonies when the page was up. Yeah, there's a lot of testimonies. And there still is, okay? I quit drinking it because you don't you do have explosive waterfalls for a couple hours afterwards. And sometimes it's only an hour, it just depends. And you guys will test it out relative to your schedule. Um, which is like diarrhea, but it's not causing dehydration. No, it's not. That salt is getting absorbed and the taste of the juice is awful, so this so is the smell. <laughs> So you need to be committed and you have to understand why you're doing this. And then the other person says, have you, have you, have any of you done the Jilly Juice protocol? I know there are people who think it's nuts, but actually it makes a lot of sense to me to summarize the protocol. It's nothing but cabbage, distilled water, and a large amount of nutritional salt blended together to make liquid juice. Then this is then fermented. She had the juice tested for the lactobacillus amount, another good flora, and the amount was so high that it couldn't be properly tested. This test was from a couple years ago. I'm not sure if it's redone. It doesn't need to be redone. It's going to be the same every time. Well, not same, but it'll still be have uh, the lactic acid, but it could have, it could, instead of being, you know, 13 million colony forming units, it could be like 16 trillion. It just depends on how long you do it and 
you know, and all of that. And, and of course, with the cabbage and kale, so it's never be the same every time. However, you're still going to have the same flora or the same bacteria because it's going through the same chemical process and you're doing it with cabbage and kale. Okay, and pink Himalayan salt. Okay, so I'm not sure if it was redundant. Anyways, she claims the high amount of nutritional salt helps kill off parasites. Okay, it energizing force, and then it it um, energizes your immune system to take anything out that's uh, an, a, a foreign object or that is excess. So she's right in there. Okay, and of course you guys put salt on worms and salt on slugs and seen them disintegrate. So that science and that chemistry still is appropriate. So. Um, and when the bugs are getting cleaned out, the high amount of lactobacillus helps it heal and seal the body. Yeah, basically what it is, it's not even, I mean, it's not even just the, the lactobacillus. I mean, the lactic acid is a part of a chemical process with the electrolytes, with the micro and macronutrition to fix the weaknesses to allow them more absorption, okay? So, um, okay. So, yeah, so there we go. So the thing with the parasites, I know Kevin was talking about parasites and there's no way to know. Now she's pulling out parasites. Now I was seeing um, liver flukes and pods, pods with like little like black strings coming out, like like, like um, uh, corn nuts. So they were kind of like a yellow corn nutty type of look. And then there were like little strings that were coming out. And I saw a few of those, a lot of this actually in the beginning or within the last like couple of years lately after I've been pooping and I check my poop all the time just to kind of see through the naked eye. I don't care about microscopic parasites, but the big parasites I worry about because those are the clumps that do take over. However, they're there for a reason. Now what Kevin has said, and he'll probably go into greater detail in the book is that they're there for a reason is for people who are on weak bodies that can't metabolize specific things in the body, like the sugars and the metals and all this stuff. And so the fungus and the paras parasites hold a role and keep the person going if their system is weak. So it's like an extra stomach or an extra body to help metabolize your foods to keep you alive. Now, obviously, if your the parasites and the fungus take over, it shuts down the body, okay? So this is why you never know if you have if you've gotten rid of all of them because maybe you don't need to get rid of all of them but when you find that you're on the j juice and you're doing waterfalls and you see less and less and less of them it means that maybe you don't have any more or the ones that you have are able to live symbiotically with you now i'm not going to go and try to examine myself now but there's no way to do that to even i don't even think if there's a test because if you have very minimal amount of parasites in your body i don't know how a test would pick up minimal i mean unless there's something that's like that's a very specific very strong test that will then identify a specific chemical combination and then that's what they highlight but i'm not worried about it because really what has me just be comfortable with knowing that maybe i have parasites but i don't really worry about them too much is the fact that i don't have major symptoms because symptoms are letting you know there's an imbalance there's an imbalance and you are now tapping into your reserves and then you have maybe 60 years or 60 days or 60 miles as i'm talking about a car to get your affairs in order or to fix the issues okay so you have only two choices when you start seeing symptoms come up it's the fact that you have a certain amount of time and some people's times are shorter than others okay and so the tides are turning because I'm not dead. People think, oh, Jillian's going to die from her juice a couple years ago. People that are on the juice are not dead. You just have to understand the role of pain because pain is letting you know that there's stuff going on that's being healed and you just have to like ride it out because if you didn't have pain, how would you know there's something wrong to go and fix it? And it's just, it's, again, it's like the idiot lights on the dashboard. It lets you know when you're tapping into your reserves or if there's a malfunction somewhere in your, in the engine block or something. And so this is how, you know, th this is what we're now we're doing is we're reintroducing the role of pain. We are um, understanding that everything that we have proven with the J-Juice has been substantiated in different contexts and compartmentalized, yes, but not necessarily because we already know the role of electrolytes, okay? When you actually think about it, 
the IV bags not only have the salt and the water, it also has glucose. So there's even a certain amount of sugar in the IV bags when people go and get rehydrated when they had a flu and it was so, so aggressive and so extreme that they're losing so much fluids and losing so much electrolytes that they have to go and get rehydrated. When, um, when runners go and run and, and really put that much torture and that much, uh, um, I don't know, stress on their muscles, they go and take these sugar and salt packs to give them the electrolytes and give them the, 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 you know, the, the other elements to repair the damage that they are doing to themselves as they keep running. Okay. You know, I don't advocate anybody doing crazy ass exercise and I'm watching, you know, two ladies on my Facebook who are big into the exercise regime and they are aging rapidly. Okay. They look great for their age in the matrix, but looking good for your age really doesn't say much. It just says that, yeah, you are showing one out of 11 different systems, your muscular system, but you have 10 other systems that have to be addressed and they're not being addressed. If we were simply made up of just the muscular system, we would just all be muscle heads and that's it. But no, there's a lot more systems that have to be balanced out. that are not being balanced out. So this is some of the, the concepts that we have to really start understanding is that we're not just the muscular system. Okay. So we got to understand balance and, you know, I'm looking for, <laughs> I mean, I mean, when you really think about it, the look at the elemental composition of the human body, this basically shows balance. Okay. So when it comes to parasites, when it comes to parasites, the human body has ways in which they deal with foreign objects. And that includes also all of your implants, whatever they are, there's ways to deal with your foreign objects. And so if there is excess fungus in the system, excess parasites in the system, excess, I mean, you could have flotsam and jetsam from operations that maybe they left something in your body during an operation or maybe you had all this gum. Remember, you used to, remember when you chewed gum as a kid and, and then you swallowed it? They're like, oh, it's going to stay in your stomach for like seven to 10 years and who knows? Well, your body's going to get rid of what does not belong because when you have a sluggish immune system, you also have a sluggish digestive system, a sluggish lymphatic system. And when you're doing the J juice, it energizes all of those systems so it gets rid of the excess. Okay. And so, yeah, if you have excess parasites, that are actually doing damage to your 11 different systems, your 11 different systems are actually on your side. They're gonna get rid of the mercenaries, okay? It's when you're procuring foreign, you know, foreign um, soldiers to go and fight the war. I mean, that's really what parasites are, they're mercenaries. You know, when we're taking in German, I think that's what back in, I don't know, the Revolutionary War, we took in mercenaries during, I guess, back when and I don't even know all of the history, but I know that mercenaries were part of the building of America, that we did take in people that we would pay to fight our war for us. So that's what parasites are. We basically pay them with our stuff, okay? So they can metabolize and feed upon us, but also keep us going. And so this is why maybe, you know, you're, some of these parasites look like they have a conscious, <laughs> they have eyes. Yeah. I mean, these parasites have, have, you know, senses of self in some ways, as well as they're also coming from a base or instinct. They want to feed. <laughs> and I couldn't begin to tell you or prove to you that, you know, a parasite has the, the ambition to be a lawyer if they were in like a regular human suit, but they definitely do have instincts to live. And then they do control parts of our body and sometimes it manifests in behaviors and then of course infections you've heard about parasitic infections fungus infections infection comes from you have an overabundance of something that's causing the body to be like hey what the hell and then you create all these white blood cells okay antibodies and other types of secretions to go then try to balance it out keep it at bay and then other minerals and other nutrition but then what happens is when people die is because they they've used up all their reserves of their minerals and their nutrition. 
So this is why when you first do the JJs, you do waterfalls, you're going to see a lot of crazy stuff come out of your ass. Some people want to characterize it, oh, you're losing your intestines. No. There is nothing dangerous, nothing poisonous, nothing at all remotely you know, bad about the J-juice. Now you take the separate ingredients by themselves and you separate them and then you try to overindulge. So if you overindulge in just salt and that's it, yeah, it's going to cause you dehydration because there's no other balancing force of water, but that's not what we're doing. If you overindulge in all of the minerals and that's it, that's basically heavy metals. There you get the heavy metal toxicity because there's no other balancing force of water and sugar and fats and proteins and carbs and all that stuff. So if you overindulge in just straight up lactobacillic, lactic acid, guess what? Acid is acid. It eats away. It, it is such, it eats away at metals. It eats away at, at flesh. It eats away at cells. When you take straight amount of acid, it could be sulfuric acid, lactic acid. It could be kombucha and apple cider vinegar because that's straight up acid you get the lactic acid and the kombucha and apple cider vinegar in the probiotics from that fermentation process then you have the fruit sugar or the organic sugar or the kefir grains or the coconut or the milk sugars and that basically is like a dose of acid okay and that's why you see people not at all getting well when they're drinking kombucha or apple cider vinegar yeah they may take away a symptom, but that basically is just like taking a poison and stopping the programming. So when you get indigestion or other types of issues, and then you're taking acid, I'm not even going to characterize what kind of acid, but you just take acid, you're taking a poison because it throws the balance off the body and your intention is to stop that symptom, but then you're affecting other systems in your body and those are called side effects. Okay. And that's why in the allopathic slash holistic, well, in most of the allopathic, when you have these specific prescription drugs, and then there's a list of side effects, no different than the vaccines, there's a list of side effects because yes, with the drugs, you're taking something for a specific symptom, but people don't realize that everything is connected. So when you take something for one specific symptom, you have 11 other, 10 other systems are going to be affected. And this is why then you have a string of drugs that you're on to deal with every single symptom because every single thing is affecting each other. Um, the vaccines is not a bad thing because here's the thing. All it is, the adjuvants are just minerals that your body needs. Okay, so we'll just put that to bed. As far as the actual virus, you're going to be exposed to it no matter what, whether it's through your family, when you kiss a baby, and even the mother kissing the baby, the mother exposing the baby to her own natural immunity, her own antibodies, her own pathogens, whatever that's excess in her world. Um, the baby will be exposed to just the hospital environment. When it goes and gets transported from the hospital into the car, into the house that's full of kids that are all over the community picking up different viruses because you cannot get away from them, the baby's going to be exposed. But what the vaccines as well as J-juice, which are relatively the same, it's a transition. J-juice is a transition from your old self to now finally your new self. And then you control the transition process. The vaccines are no different. When you bring a baby into a world, even though the mother has the environment and her natural immunity, the world is still evolving. The world has, still has so much data. The baby still has to go and negotiate with. And the vaccines are just a transition process. Okay. And then those that have major issues they bring to the table are going to have adverse reactions no matter what, whether they get the vaccine or they stay or they're in the environment without the vaccine, they're gonna have to negotiate the environment in some way. And some babies are so weak that if they put a baby that's already weak into an environment with nothing to help transition to its environment, they could die. And it has happened. And it also happened people babies have haven't been able to negotiate the vaccine. So it means they couldn't negotiate their environment. So who's to say? you know, that they were going to survive their environment without the vaccine. Some do, some don't, it just depends. You know, the ones that do, great, but it doesn't mean that you are now the, you know, the, the reasoning of why people should not do vaccines. Jilly juice and vaccines are basically the same. It's a transition process. I never thought I'd actually characterize vaccines and jilly juice as the same mechanism, but they are. They're both transitions. They both will give you certain symptoms to let you know things are going on and the body is now adjusting to the new environment and you're going to have to deal with it. Okay. 
So when you do the J juice, you can definitely get the vaccine if it's required. Here now, here's the thing. You know, I if I had to get the Ebola vaccine or any kind of vaccine that's new and upcoming because of some kind of pandemic or epidemic, I'd do it. I wouldn't care because I'm drinking the J juice. I already have a smart meter in my house. I already have 5G. Okay. I am now upgrading my device to be able to handle my environment. I am adapting to my environment, my atmosphere. And so this is what we're trying to do with everybody. And right now you're seeing all the different groups who are suffering from Lyme disease. You saw Heidi's picture, her before and during picture, you know, and I think she had dealt with either Lyme disease or you know, more gallons. Okay. So some people have more gallons. They have Lyme disease. They have parasitic infections. They have other types of fungal infections. You know, those are all just symptoms of a universal root cause. It's malabsorption, malnutrition, malabsorption that leads to the aging process. I mean, you can't absorb your food supply and be able to get all of the maximum nutrition out of your food supply. Your body is going to take from what you've already gathered over the last like 40, 50, 60, 70 years, the minerals and nutrients, and just going to suck the life out of it. You saw her before picture, before the J juice. You saw that the circles under her eyes, her skin was papery thin. She was so thin and so fragile that she looks like a wind could blow and knock her over. Okay. But she looked, I mean, she wasn't like full of life, but she was still walking. She was still talking. She was able to comprehend my information. She was able to process it, which means her brain was able to process the information. And her, and then she created the strength for her body. Because even though her body was very weak, her brain was the one that overrode whatever her body was saying as far as like, oh my God, this is too much. And then she, you know, and she figured out a, a good regimen for her. And then guess what? She fulfilled or refilled the mineral reserves that were that were lacking. You see the collagen, the color come back to her face. You see that her skin is now finally plumping up and water and, and fat now. She's she's able to, now you're seeing the progression. You're seeing that she's doing much better. And then give, give it another five years, okay? It's gonna be completely amazing. It's already amazing. So, um, so there's that and then as far as the different, the vital organs, because when we talk about vital organs, and then uh, you've seen some of the stuff on Facebook or on my page about the brain, and there's there's probably hierarchy, like there's a heart and the brain, and then we have the liver and the lungs and the kidneys, and those are vital organs, but you can live without one kidney. You can live without kidneys, but you have to go to dialysis. If you don't go to dialysis, you're dead. Um, you don't live without a liver, but you can have a little bit of a liver. You can cut out part of your liver. But if you don't have a liver, then you get a liver transplant. Then, you know, then, yeah, you know, th th there's a certain shelf life when you get transplants. Um, you need a heart, obviously. Some people have pacemakers to kind of regulate the, the flow of blood and the feeding of the heart. Um, you need your lungs. You can live without one lung. Um, but you definitely need your brain. If you are actually brain dead, it's done with. You can't breathe. You can't do anything. It's done with. But there have been cases where kids were born with like 2% brain matter. And then they were born. So they were alive, but they had a little bit of the brain. And then guess what? They started then the body was able to, you know, as it was getting fed, the body was able to then go and regrow the brain and bring it from 2% to 80% or something like that. Okay. You really can't be born without a brain. That doesn't make sense, but you can have a percentage. And even a percentage of a vital organ can keep you alive. Okay? So this is why I say, you know, when people do the J juice and they are they have a transplant, there's still cells in there that are belong to you that 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 may not be completely functioning, but there are seeds of cells in there that if you actually did a J juice potentially over time you could regrow that missing organ or that organ that you have to have a transplant for. So as far as the, the, the liver, the lungs, the kidneys, um, gallbladders, I mean, which people can live without gallbladder. So I understand the whole gallbladder transplant. But um, thyroid too, people can live without thyroids, but it, it just, it shortens your lifespan. 
um, and hearts and all that stuff. So even if you had a little bit there, a little bit there, you have the potential to regrow it, but you have to go through the pain process. Do I know how many heart attacks you have to go through to regrow your heart? I have no idea. I mean, the process of regrowing a major organ is going to be symptoms. And so this is what we have to really now understand is that when you are in the process of regrowing any type of organ that you have a transplant for, you're going to have to go through the symptoms. You have to understand that these symptoms mean that the body is repairing and regenerating. And this is what, and this is what, what um, the lady on Dr. Phil, she mischaracterized the, the stroke that allegedly that the J juice did to her. But I, here's the thing. The way I say allegedly is because I know the context of where she's coming from. She thinks I caused her harm because that's what was, that's how it's characterized in the allopathic holistic. That anytime you get a symptom, it's harm to the body. We have to stop it. And so I don't want to come from that context of like, yeah, I'm some, you know, evil person that wants to just induce symptoms and hurt people. No. The fact that she had, she was going to have that heart attack no matter what. Now, did the J-juice expedite it because of the salt energizing force? It potentially could have. But the fact that she's able to survive it said a lot because some people don't survive strokes. The reason why is because they were missing the mineral reserves. When you look at the bigger picture, the logic of minerals and the logic of nutrition, the logic of J-juice and the logic of why some people die from strokes and others don't is because of who has the excess mineral reserves and the nutrition to help heal that specific organ. So when someone dies from a heart attack or dies from a stroke, the body kept letting the person know that it was hitting reserves. It was on reserves and it wants to heal because the body wants to, that's what symptoms are is the body wants to heal. So if you've experienced a string of heart attacks or even one, but if you experience a string of heart attacks in the past or one, when you're doing the healing process, it means that the body is now able to negotiate those minerals in the body to then fix that weakness. So it lets you know that, Hey, it's doing something. It's taking care of something. And you have enough mineral reserves to survive your symptoms. <laughs> the ones that don't survive their symptoms is because they have now depleted their reserves. They have ignored all the red flags. And that lady on Dr. Phil, she had a, a multitude of issues. I don't know her, her medical background. Only she knows it, but I could probably guess that she's probably had other circulatory system issues. She probably had strokes in the past, heart attacks in the past. And she was already set to have another one, but the fact that she lived through the one that she was on the J juice with is a testament to my protocol that she actually was able to have enough minerals from drinking the J juice to be able to handle that body's healing process. Okay. So we got to care and I call it healing symptoms. So people understand why, we need not to be afraid of symptoms. I mean, we call it healing pain, healing symptoms, healing, healing, healing. And then we can characterize every single diagnosis as a healing, like fibromyalgia is a body trying to heal, but you're not giving it what it needs. The healing fibromyalgia, healing Parkinson's, healing, I mean, yeah, I guess we can call it, I can call it healing symptoms, but I don't wanna, I, it's like proprietary intellectual property to be naming specific disease names because that's, only for biotech. And that's why you see the, the holistic, naturopathic, spiritual healers never ever mention pharmacology. They never ever mention anything in their advertising as far as diagnoses or certain disease names because that is proprietary. That is intellectual property. There's a whole like intention around that. When you name an actual disease like pharmacology, you're then then um, you, the assumption is then you're going to go and treat that with a specific drug. So this is why we don't mention specific diseases that J-Juice can deal with. 
because we're not in that world of the allopathic holistic trying to manage your symptoms, compartmentalize them body as if they were separate. The whole thing with J-Juice is we take into account whole. And what the holistic community should be talking about, but they don't, J-Juice actually is truly holistic. Okay, because we actually look at the body as a whole. We don't compartmentalize and have supplements for your candida, or we don't have essential oils for your, you know, your lungs or whatever. We don't have all these different um, flowers and foods that only compartmentalize and say, oh, yes, this food does this for this, and this food does this for this, and this food, and this supplement, and this oil, and this detox, and this remedy is for all these different types of symptoms. Because really, they're emulating the, the, or the, the allopathic. They're not holistic. They're compartmentalizing. But they call themselves holistic because it sounds different. It sounds like, oh, yeah, they're so, they're so healthy. They're so organic. Whole foods. It sounds great. But, you know, people that go to whole foods because they're going away from the, the, the allopathic world don't need whole foods because they can't even negotiate the whole foods. They can't even break it down. The people that go to whole foods because of their health issues have no business eating a whole food because they don't have the means to break it down to get to the nutritional elements that they really truly need. They need something completely different. They need processed food that's done in a specific chemical way, a chemistry, fermentation, but not the kombuchas and the apple cider vinegars and the alcohols and all that bullshit. They need the pink Himalayan salt, the cabbage and kale, and the water, okay? And they need to have it broken down so it's processed. They need to actually puree the cabbage and the kale with the, with, the, with the water and the salt. And then it needs to sit for like three days plus in a room temperature to then go through a, bio, go through a chemical process, a process. That's processed food. People who are sick do not need to do the whole foods because it completely is going to work against them and they're going to have under the impression because they lost a bunch of weight or they've changed a little bit of their symptoms but they're still degrading they're still aging you think it's really the whole foods are really helping them no it actually works against them okay so simply just changing your diet doesn't mean shit if you can't even negotiate the actual elements and the nutrition in those whole foods so that's why Whole Foods doesn't worry about it. That's why they were under fire on the whole GMO versus organic. Because it doesn't matter if it's GMO. Who gives a fuck if it's GMO? Excuse my language, I know. But who cares if it's GMO or if it has pesticides? It's all just minerals. Your body needs minerals. It, it, it knows how to negotiate them. If you, if you actually repair and heal and seal, your body will then release any excess and absorb what it needs. And that's how your body works. It has a filtration process. And if you don't understand that your body has an intelligence, then you're going to forever live in this little bubble and go from one diet to one remedy to, to another, you know, your whole life until your body passes away because you really cannot fulfill your mineral reserves. And that's what it comes down to. Those are going to whole foods that are aging, that think that eating like just, you know, carrots and cabbage and, and raw carrots. I mean, even just drinking just raw cabbage juice is a minimal amount of program changing. Yeah, you'll lose weight, but you haven't got to the root cause because you haven't fixed the issues. So, you know, so, so those that are going into their whole foods and the raw foods and all that stuff are superficially changing the programming, but the body still has to go and, and, and deal with those weaknesses. And guess what? Your heart and your brain and your lungs and your liver and your kidneys take priority and most likely the heart and the brain take way more priority than even, I mean, your, than even your kidneys. I mean, all of them are going to, but see, the body will figure out a priority based upon the severity. It's called biochemical triage. And that's a new term that I created because it's true. It's biochemical triage. There's actually um, levels of importance, levels of priority when it comes to the body healing. And we're seeing it with the J-juice. When you first do J-juice, you're going to see what gets addressed first. The pain is going to let you know What's being addressed first? What has taken priority? Of course, it's going to keep your heart going. Of course, it's going to keep your brain going. Of course, it's going to keep your, your lungs going. But most likely, you don't have issues. Some of you don't have issues in your, in, your, in your heart because you already have resources being taken from other parts of your body to keep the heart going. 
So that's why you're seeing maybe headaches happen. That's why you're probably seeing other pains in your body happen because the body already took priority, took the heart and the and the brain and the lungs and the liver and the kidneys and priority. But some of you do have kidney issues. Some of you do have heart issues. Some of you do have brain issues. Some of you do have lung issues. And those may get, get addressed first because that is the main stuff that has issues that you need to address. So if you don't have your heart being addressed first or your brain, well, I don't know if you have a headache, it could be your brain. But if you don't have your kidneys being addressed first, but I had my kidneys were addressed. At some point during the healing process, I felt a more of a release of the of, of any excess waste. Like I felt more of a, a, a it's just, I noticed that the my pee and how it was being released was very different than what it usually was. It was a lot more clear and copious and yeah, it was a lot more. <clears throat> so yeah, so you're going to see, you know, so this is what I'm saying is that, that the body has priority. So you'll see the body has priority during the jelly juice process. And then when you guys are decaying in the matrix in the allopathic holistic world, you're going to see the body is going to have priority in keeping certain organs alive. And that's why you see the, the the hair going gray and the wrinkles happening and and then extremities and things start, you know, having issues, you're having arthritis and you know, your, your extremities are just, you know, they, they can't seem to circulate the blood well. So you're always cold in the wintertime and you have Raynaud's disease or you have some kind of autoimmune disorder because the body is trying to heal simultaneous things at once, but you're not giving it what it needs. So it's in constant pain, trying to sell resources to keep things going. I mean, people are a mess out there. When you have an autoimmune disorder, when you have any kind of diagnosis, you're a mess. You're a complete mess. And you have to finally get some order back into the into this death and chaos that's going on inside. Okay. And so it's just, yeah. So the whole thing with the parasites and fungus, Kevin, I know you just joined, you'll go more in depth with that. But I talk about it that, you know, it's it's kind of like a backup system for people who have weak bodies. Now, as far as when someone like me who's relatively well balanced, I still look at my stool. I haven't seen any pods or any kind of parasites that I know of, but there maybe could, who knows? I don't know. But I'm not going in and looking in depth and then under a micron electron, you know, I don't really care. What I worry about is the symptoms. If I have symptoms, I know there's an imbalance, time to do the J juice. I notice though, sometimes when I'm in more of a chaotic environment, that when I wake up in the morning, I have a little bit of a, a stuffed up nose, a tiny bit, and then I blow it out. And that's all the excess stuff that I was exposed to the day before. Okay. Those are the only symptoms I really ever get. I'll sneeze. That's a symptom of the body releasing something excess. I've sneezed. I've coughed. I've hocked up loogies. Even when I, you know, when I eat, I feel stuff coming through my nose. And it's not because I'm eating stuff that's poison. No, it's just the body's getting rid of any excess minerals that it doesn't need. And then when I poop and pee in the morning or even during the day, it releases any excess. My body is continuously releasing and absorbing on a continuous basis. And I don't have to even think about it. I notice it. I acknowledge it. I am thankful for it. I don't have to go and try to tweak every single system based upon my understanding. But that's what the allopathic holistic world does. They want you to tweak every single thing as if you have control over every single mechanism and involuntary and voluntary no you don't but you give your body the right formula it will do it on its own and then you just have to understand what it's doing and if you don't understand what it's doing then you will stop the actual natural process of your body healing and purging and having you adapt to your environment and as far as the friend requests you know i get a lot of friend requests you guys okay i don't know who's on the up and up i noticed that in that um in that screenshot, if you're like, yeah, you can friend request me. Yeah, you can friend request me. But until I see, you know, that there's a pattern of like support, whether or not that's really your intention or you're just trying to get friends on my Facebook so you can have access to all my information to then go and talk smack, I don't care. As soon as I see angry faces or laughing faces that are inappropriate, I take off my Facebook. Okay, because I don't deal with anyone messing with my world. I don't. It's either love, like, laugh in the appropriate places, and that's really what I wear. The whole sad faces I don't deal with, and the whole angry faces I don't deal with. Everything else, it's in context. And I'll give people that have been on my Facebook the benefit of the doubt. So some people will mistakenly put an angry face, and I'll be like, hey, did you mean to do that? Okay, so, I mean, my page is no more fear, 
no more conspiracy. I don't fear the smart meters. I don't fear the 5G. I don't deal with conspiracies. I don't do activism. I focus purely on the goal of getting my body well balanced and giving you guys some kind of support that's well balanced. And then giving you the opportunity to figure out how you can take my information and word it the best way that you can to then give people the opportunity in your world. But you know, no one should be promoting J juice unless they're doing J juice. Okay, because you wouldn't have you don't have any background on J juice if you're not even doing it. So so yeah, just do the J juice so you understand, and that way you can be a really good resource for some of your friends and family who are looking for something else to explore. And don't ever ram this information down anybody's throat. Don't try to convert to anybody. Okay. Don't try to be a coach to anyone personally because it'll bite you in the ass. I've already experienced it. Kevin's already experienced it. Even Bridge has already experienced people getting bit in the ass. Them getting bit in the ass by being a personal coach to people who don't understand it. Because when someone really leans on you that much, they're looking to blame. You don't want to ever put yourself in a position where someone can blame you for whatever issue that they have. Because people will. Especially if they're going into J-Juice for a specific symptom. If they're treating J-Juice as if it was another cure, another remedy, another thing that they can do and put under their belt. Say, oh yeah, I did it. It didn't work. Blah, blah, blah. When someone comes into J-Juice with a very specific, I understand that's, how, that, that's what's going to happen. But as soon as they really start glomming on to you and they start, so here's the thing how you notice when someone really doesn't truly understand, they start messaging you on a continuous basis. Oh my God, this happened. Oh my God, that happened. What do I do about this? What do I do? That's when I know people don't get it. And I, and then done with no, if you're going into this with a specific intention to disappear your symptoms that quickly, or the one main symptom you're coming in, nope, you're not a candidate for dangerous. You don't get the body works as a whole. It's going to prioritize. So not only will your mouth or whatever issue you have that you're coming in for is going to get dealt with, but hey, maybe you might have other issues like in your eyes and your nose and your ears and whatever, and that's all going to get taken care of too. And you're going to be freaked the hell out because you're not prepared to deal with your eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. You only want to deal with your mouth. Sorry, but it doesn't work that way. You got to deal with everything. The body is going to prioritize, prioritize everything. So yes, you're going to have to have some kind of discernment on who it is that you drop seeds to and who it is you're willing to help on a very minimal basis. You don't want to coach anybody. You just want to give them just the support. That's why my group is there. So everybody can, can see a cross section of different people and their support. But the ones that don't really truly really understand, they're going to be just talking about their symptoms and trip out and be like, Oh my God. And you guys seen me and I did it publicly with one of the people. Cause that was an example of somebody coming into J juice with a total mischaracterization. Oh, it's another cure. No, J juice is not another cure. It's a whole body reset and you cannot pick and choose what gets dealt with first or how long it's going to take. <laughs> and when you let your, when you let you, when you let yourself get that bad, J juice is going to, it'll help you or it'll totally completely devastate you because you have an expectation because you didn't understand J juice. So whatever. Anyways, you guys have a good one, but um, I wanted to give you guys some good news that yes, the tides are turning out there. Yeah. There's still trolls out there. People still that don't understand J juice because they're watching all the videos from way back when, but I do have, you know, um, when you go to my business page, you can copy and paste the pinned post on my business page if someone wants to bring up the whole Bruce Wilmot stuff, because that gives you a whole timeline of events as far as Bruce Wilmot and then what Pathios as well as what other um, Buzzfeed has left out purposely to paint a picture. Okay. So, um, but whatever, you know, everybody has to make some money. People make money off of sensationalism. It is what it is. Some people are still working from that information or from the Newsweek, which I got a few times where someone put a Newsweek. I'm like, oh my God, that's fake news. And by the way, if you have, and I'm, and I'm pretty, I mean, I've, I've been on pages like these holistic pages that I was supportive like six or seven years ago and they still want to attack me. I'm like supporting you. 
because it was from my mentality of six or seven years ago. And they're like, oh my god, we reported you to the OAG, and you know, you're killing people. I'm like, I'm still here. Nobody's being killed. And here's everything that I may have, that whatever I said has been misconstrued or mischaracterized. Here's all the responses. So I have videos to respond to anybody's objection. And so I don't care anymore what's written about me. I don't care anymore what's said about me because the proof is in the pudding. The science is there. Okay. The science is there. And either people are going to do it or they're not going to do it. But I have every single video on those things. I have a video on Bruce Willman. I have a video on the whole thing with the, the gender stuff and a video on the whole thing with lactic acid and sugar. And, and then as far as all the different diseases, you know, that's just manifestations of weaknesses. The body has to go and try to deal with. And then the allopathic holistic world also tries to deal with it. And then it, essentially it makes things worse, but you may get temporary state of execution because you'll be anesthetized a zombie with your head in the clouds until the body goes, hey, I'm going to I'm going to adapt to that remedy. And then now the pain returns because the body wants to live. Whenever you guys get on a drug and then the drug doesn't work anymore, it's because the body wants to live and you're trying to stop it. So you might as well just deal with the pain and make it work for you. If you're going to be in pain anyways, you might as well and save your money and spend it on, you know, um, regenerative resources. Salt's always going to be there. Trace minerals will always be there. As long as we have photosynthesis, we have cabbage. As long as we have, you know, this earth, we have water. That's all you need. That's all you need. All right. Okay, that's it. You guys have a good day. Thanks. Bye.